my God. Mir Hababikum, Kwe, Bonjour, welcome. When I returned from vacation in February and received the letter from the Alliance that I was chosen for this award, I had to read it several times. And then, of course, I burst into tears, which I've just done again, which I am wont to do, and went to my partner, Sharon, who's here tonight with me, who took one look at me and said, what's wrong? She was a little panicked. And I handed her the letter to read just so I could take it in. And she read it. And she looked up at me. And she gave me a hug and smiled with relief, I think, because I wasn't bearing horrible news. I then began to reflect on how so many people in this room and in our communities everywhere deserve an award. Those who have traveled across dangerous waters to reach the elusive shore, either real or metaphoric. Those who manage to work three or four part-time jobs to feed a family. Those who have endured overt or covert discrimination, racism, or judgment. And so many whose life challenges remain buried in minds and bodies emerging as sadness, rage, or so often compassion for others. Seeing others in that moment as needing something they can give. Not charity, but reaching out, sharing, recognizing a need to connect with someone who knows, someone who listens, someone who cares, and who by times walks beside quietly, as so many of you do every day. Each one of you deserves recognition. I would say, I've just been doing my job. I get paid to notice, to work with amazing people, many of whom are in this room. I've been paid to listen to what exists in the silences between the words, to bear witness, to show up, to help create spaces for others as experts, to better understand what is needed and to hand the shovels and pens to them, then to stand back and support and by times be invited in and participate in the creation of something wonderfully meaningful, something simple but profound that works, something that was initiated because it was needed to be informed and created by the people who would benefit, not as a token, but because they are the experts. And we have also been conditioned to always be looking for who and what is being missed, not seen, willfully dismissed, or not understood. For those of us who have have or have had the privilege of doing this work, you will know that the meaningful stuff is most remarkably found in the bucket of other duties as required. (laughs) There really is no relevant manual for how to do the work we do. There is no job description that begins with, start with your heart to know what is right. There is no employment strategy that states unequivocally to lead with compassion and says, begin with what you know, check it out, and find out the rest. There is no map that says, start where the land is fertile, or begin to till and fertilize until it is, and then find the one person at a time to plant with you and grow from there or to listen relentlessly to what is being said or not being said and follow the thread, stand back and support from behind, stand in front and push forward for the most invisible to be seen first and lead from behind and build from there. From the beginning with those who join because it is right, just begin selflessly, courageously, even when demonstrably terrified and know it will be a journey in shared leadership, relying on others. There is no manual. Real learning comes from watching, doing, knowing, messing up, living in community, and to resist not trying based on fear. We only really know about the past and bear the risk of moving into an unknown future every day. What I learned about myself throughout my career was somehow embedded in the answer I gave in an interview for a job long time ago. 
to the question, where do you see yourself in five or 10 years? <laughs> a common question, but remarkably profound. At that time, I had absolutely no idea. I just wanted a job. But an interview, I have no idea, isn't a very smart thing to say. So I thought about it and I said, the chance to be involved in something that really matters, working with others smarter than me, and expanding my world, challenging what I know, forcing me to realize I will never know enough and will therefore always have to rely on others to work with me, to risk together, and to be perpetually open to learning. But in truth, I think I came to this work from the time I was small and thought about running a camp for inner city kids just because I loved the woods, the outdoors, the night sky, paddling with the loons, and sleeping in a tent which apparently others don't really all enjoy. <laughs> and I wanted other kids to have the chance I had. And then I had the privilege of traveling for a few years in North Africa and the Middle East, hitchhiking across the Sahara, outrageously fearless, naive, and adventurous youth is so awesome. And I had my basic medical kit, doled out aspirins, dressed wounds, worked with women and children, and learned that the Saharan Touareg women and children were the most resilient, creative, inspiring group I had ever known. I was introduced to hash candy in the markets of Marrakesh and Senegal and had some really bad trips. I became pregnant with my first child and knew I needed to continue to go to places physical and metaphoric that would challenge me to learn, be embedded and nurtured in community, look for what was not always visible, and that I would share anything I had as I raised my family. On one trip, my partner at the time and I spent 14 days traveling by camel from an archeological dig in Mauritania to a small village called Tishit, located in the Western Sahara. There we met a young man making his way to Dakar, Senegal, from Dakar, Senegal, to Paris to find a job. He had just a few precious items tied in a piece of cloth and wear, was wearing a flimsy robe. Paris is so cold, I said. I offered him my Canadian ever popular red plaid jacket, which he wouldn't take without giving me something in return, which I kept refusing. But finally, I understood his need to do so. And so I have this ring, which I've never taken off, to remind me to be humble, to challenge my arrogance, to take risks and keep me grounded about how, how I too need always to remember to share and accept, realizing that to reciprocate is a human instinct all, often practiced by those who have less to give and never to diminish or judge intent. I have been lucky, born of first generation Europe, European immigrants who escaped the pogroms in Eastern Europe. I have two gentle, smart, and very funny children who are now amazing young men of whom I could not be prouder. A wonderful and loving partner, an amazing brother, sister-in-law, they're all here, an extended family, the greatest group of friends, the most awesome job, and the privilege of working with the brightest people who are much smarter than me, thank goodness, and who challenge me every day, many of whom are in this room and some are behind me. <laughs> and keep changing it up. <laughs> I have a community that has allowed me to grow, encouraged me to question, excited me to learn, and pushed me to move beyond what I can see, calling me to account, inviting me to be courageous, simultaneously humble, and perpetually hopeful that there is a better world. We just need to stick to our moral compass search for the right questions to guide us, and know we are all wonderfully yet delightfully imperfect. And we only know what we know. The rest is in the search, in perpetuity, with adventures and challenges to be discovered. So thank you to everyone in this room for being who you are, doing what you do, and keeping our North Star in your sights. So many are dependent upon it. To the Alliance, Adriana, and all of my colleagues, local, provincial, national, and international, and especially to Jason, Shannon, Kathleen, the 
SRCHC staff and anyone connected to CHCs and community work. To my kids, Jamie, Josh, and Alif, my partner Sharon, my family, you have taught me so much and I love you all. And as my wise son Josh said when I was angsting about what to say, he said, Mom, just start with your heart. You don't have to be smart. Just be who you are. That's what you've always told us. So here goes. I've continued to be passionate in the work of social justice and creating healthy and equitable communities by actively working for change, appreciating the privilege of being able to do this work and being constantly mindful of how rich my experiences have been, how I've had opportunities to meet and work with fabulous people like you all. And because I've had the honor of doing this for almost 20 years at SRCHC, I have decided to leave South Riverdale Community Health Centre this fall knowing that I've had an incredible run, worked with an extraordinary senior team, and I'm leaving an organization that is solid and will do well with new leadership and new vision and new energy. So with really mixed feelings, it's a little terrifying actually, I will leave with confidence that you will all continue the work in which we have engaged to advocate for the rights of people who are marginalized and to fight like hell with intelligence and a visceral commitment and tirelessness against the unremitting overdose crisis and other human rights threatened or violated, to continue the amazing work with people who struggle and who are systematically relegated to the margins, to the wrongs of institutionalized racism, discrimination, and colonization, and doctrines that saw land as empty and indigenous people as invisible and inferior, an indictment declared by doctors Julie Kay and Beverly Jacobs after missing and murdered indigenous women and girls were finally pro proclaimed a genocide. Yes, I said a genocide. joining the intolerable lists of genocides across the world, including Rwanda, Armenia, Yugoslavia, Guatemala, etc., and to fight the attempt to render any people invisible, whether it is people who are poor, are refugees who use substances, or who are members of the LGBTQ2SII sector. The principles of inclusion and equity, and to remember and to never forget the roots of activism that launched this sector, the principles of inclusion and equity, and to remember to be kind to one another through the work, often exhausted and even demoralized in the relentless commitment to creating and living equitably. You have all taught me much. We have struggled and learned together. Thank you for all of you do, all you do. Thank you for teaching me so much, and thank you for remembering community. Because as Audrey Lord said, Without community, there is no liberation, and I believe that in the deepest part of my heart. And as an Australian Aboriginal staying goes, traveler, there are no paths. Paths are made by walking. And although traveling leaves you speechless, as the Moroccan scholar and traveler Ibn Battuta said, it turns you into a storyteller. So keep traveling, since there are more stories to tell, and in the words of Maya Angelou, remember, People will forget what you say. People will even forget what you do, but people will never forget how you make them feel. So be bold, be courageous, be strategic, humble, and vulnerable, and relentlessly kind. And in memory of Joe Leonard, in whose honor this award was created, we need at no time more than now to take up his commitment to community and social justice and reignite his pledge to retain and ensure a nonprofit public health system in which everyone, regardless of their ability to pay, receives the highest quality of care, ensuring our public health system remains strong and accessible to all. And finally, in the words of Rabbi Hillel, so if not now, when? If not us, then who? because, as we know, there is so much more to do. Shokran, miigwech, merci, thank you.